everyone, welcome back to the Football Shirt Show, the channel that keeps you up to date with the latest and greatest football shirts. And I'm here today to bring you a brand new episode in the new series on this channel, Around the Ground. And today I'm here in Ilfracombe. But before we do get inside, let's take a look at the team. Ilfracombe Town FC, also known as the Bluebirds, were founded in 1902. Over the years from back when the club was first founded, Ilfracombe played in many different leagues, including the North Devon League and the Exeter and District League, and finished in various different places. Now, however, after being promoted in 2019, the club are currently members of the South West Peninsula League. The manager's name is Ben Benelik, who is also a sports development officer at Exeter City Football Club. They play their home games here at Marlborough Park. Let's get inside and take a look around. The site was bought in 1923 and has a capacity of 2,000 people, with 50 seats and around a quarter of the capacity being covered. The pitch is situated on a hill and is overlooked by a church and has some really lovely views. There's also a bush in the shape of a bird. I'm not sure if it's just a coincidence, but if they've done this on purpose, it's really cool. Joining me now is Matthew Hayne, chairman of Ilfracombe Town. How would you describe the club in your own words? Uh, a club run wholly by volunteers. Um, uh, it's a second full-time job for me. Um, but uh, my uh, my committee are are, are doers, um, especially with regards to the to the ground. Um, obviously, the pitch is looking excellent, although not marked. Um, yeah, the uh, the groundsmen are, are excellent, and we do have a, a, a willing team of volunteers. The only, the only people that we pay at the club are our bar and uh, clubhouse staff, but the rest of it is all undertaken by volunteers of the town. Well, you mentioned you you of course uh, got another job as well. How does it balance itself out with the chairman? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I run my own business uh, and I'm an accountant, um, so uh, yeah, running a, a football club and being in charge of its finances uh, and the assets that we've got here is sort of hand in hand, but I do have to be very careful that one doesn't overlap the other. Um, uh, it's you know, Saturdays is a, is, a, is a free day for me for, for work anyway, but um, uh, yeah, the, the bits and pieces behind the system, uh, behind the scenes, sorry, I will need to uh, spend a, a bit of time doing. Um, yeah, it can be challenging, but um, rewarding because um, you know, we're now in the step five of the, of the uh, football pyramid and um, playing in the FA Cup again this Saturday. Uh, so um, yeah, it, it is rewarding. Well, that is really good. I mean, you say uh, it can sometimes be challenging. Do you have a uh, sort of biggish backroom sort of team? Um, we have a, a football secretary who, uh, according to our AGM two weeks ago, um, has just completed his 49th year at the club. Oh. Stalwart, yeah. He's, he, if you cut him open, he'd have blue blood going through his veins. Um, uh, we've got uh, a, a vice chairman and general manager. Um, we've got ground staff. We've got a treasurer, uh, and we've got uh, independent committee members. They've all got an opinion, which is great. I don't want to, I, I don't want yes people. I want people with different opinions because that's the only way that the, uh, the, the club can go forward. Um, but yeah, they, yeah, they're all they're all doers in their own right. Um, it's just that it comes down to the to the nitty gritty. I've got to get involved with it. Uh, and yeah, it take, takes up at least a couple of hours a day. Yeah, I mean, it's, it sounds like a nice community. Talking about community, do you know how much the football club means to the town? Um, it, 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 it does vary. Um, we've got uh, a, a, we've had a football club here since 1902, uh, and the, the grounds are, were, were donated to us, um, including the houses here. We own the, the these two, which we rent out. Um, uh, but yeah, the big, there's a big rugby following in. in North Devon, especially in Ilfracombe, so yeah, it's it's split rugby and football in in, in, the, in, in the local area. There are some very uh, smaller amateur teams uh, in the area as well, in Ilfracombe and Georgia, and Coombe Martin, which is six miles that way. Um, but uh, yeah, it's yeah, we, we get on average 120 to 150 uh, people at home game, uh, and that's excellent. Well, you mentioned you've got a couple of houses over there. Yeah. How does that impact the club? Does it give you more revenue? Yeah, yeah. We um, we rent the two houses on a short, short, hold, short hold tenancies, and the income then basically covers our overheads. So we've had a, a very difficult 18 months, as everyone has with the pandemic, but they've kept us afloat. And obviously, applying for all the FA grants and the local authority grants has kept us liquid through um, 
uh, through the last 18 months. So we are able to start the new se season in a very um, uh, capitalised manner. Uh, so uh, yeah, they, they, every penny from the, from the goes back into the club. Okay, yeah, that sounds really good. Then. Whereabouts did the players come from? Um, to... Yeah, they are very much local. I think we've got one player who has signed on for us. Um, up near Bristol, but he is uh, a local North Devon lad that now lives up there. He doesn't play all the time. I think he's been, he played our first league game uh, away at uh, Bitten uh, a couple of weeks ago. Um, but yeah, we've got a, a group of players from Ilfracu, from Barnstable, from Biddyford, from Torrington. Um, and uh, yeah, Torrington is 35, 40 minutes drive away maximum. But yeah, we we um, we like to operate with, with, with local players if we can. Obviously, yeah. Yeah, their availability dictates sometimes. How did you actually get into football? Well, it's, from when I was a when I was a young young man, I uh, I played uh, and I was fortunate enough to play uh, in the Western League uh, when I was 17, 18, and then uh, played for the county and the region, and then went to uh, to trials at Birmingham and, and, and signed a, a traineeship there, but got injured, oh. and um, I was I was only a player up there for nine months, um, and uh, and I haven't really played since. Um, I decided then I'd take up refereeing and refereed up to Western League level um, and gave that up when my, my children were born. But um, my son is now uh, is now coming up 16. He's just left Southampton's Academy um, because he was fed up with the, tra with the travelling. It is an hour to the nearest motorway from here. Um, but uh, it gives me a bit more time. So I always like to give something back to the community. Um, I can't play, I can't coach and I don't want to referee anymore. Uh, so the next best thing is running a football club. Yeah, well, it, it does sound like your life is heavily involved around football then. So if my life, if my wife allows, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but finally today, you mentioned you're in the FA Cup. You're playing again on Saturday. Yeah. How far do you think you can go this season? Um, <laughs> I play. I, I take every round as it comes. Um, yeah, being um, being the fact that we are we are we operate on a on a very shoestring budget here in Ilford every round. Every Winning every round is a bonus uh, because every round provides a, uh, a, a, a reward, a financial reward. Well, yeah, good luck to you, good luck to the team. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining us. You're very welcome. You. Matt's also really kindly offered to take us around the clubhouse. Let's go and have a look. Yeah, yeah, it's been extensively refurbished over the last seven or eight years. Um, uh, prior to that, it was still a very much a 1980s. Um, uh, to football club clubhouse. Yeah, this this wall was still in place. We've had to put steel across there, and there was literally an archway with a curtain here that separated the bar area from the function room area. We had no central heating, so any functions here in the in the, in the winter um, were, 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 were cold. They needed some dancing to warm up. But now um, the previous chairman, Trevor, uh, he uh, he uh, he came in I think 2015. He's he's a builder, um, and so he's um, he's done most of the work himself. Uh, and it is, it's, it's a sellable area now. We do, uh, we do have a lot of functions up here. You can do weddings, uh, wakes, birthday parties, you know, any kind of function that, that people want, then, then uh, we, we can accommodate them. Um, and so uh, we've got a fully stocked bar. And uh, once you've gone, I might help myself. <laughs> Around the clubhouse on the walls are different pieces of memorabilia, ranging from photos and trophies to shirts and flags. To get through to the dressing room, you have to walk down some steps, which again have some pictures on the walls from the club's history. And you're led into a hallway, which not only has the home dressing room, but also the away one. But this is the home. We also got to see the shirts. This is the home one, and I really love the blue and white working well together and the stripy background. And this is the away one, a lot more flashy, but still very nice.
Getting back outside, we had one more walk around the pitch, enjoying the views. Parked outside of the ground is the team's bus, which is not only eye-catching, but really, really cool. But there we go, that does about wrap up today's video from North Devon. Before I do go, however, though, I would like to thank Matt for arranging the tour, and of course, good luck to Ilfracombe Town Football Club for this season. If I do ever visit here again, I'll definitely make sure to pop in and say hello. But there we go, like I said, that's the end, so please make sure to like, subscribe, share, and comment if you did enjoy, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.